the importance to look at what your skill set is as a tour right. manager, as a production right. manager, right? And say, okay, well, how can I take that? Take this and apply it, it elsewhere. Apply it to my local town hall and say, look, this is exactly. what I do, right? I'm really right. good at organizing a large exactly. group of people, making sure they're 100%. safe. Da, 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 da. So that I'm is, hoping yes. that there are, there are more people doing that. And I'll let you talk. Right. About no, no, that I, 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 that's awesome to hear. That um, it sounds like we've got similar experience with with the food and security issue, um, yeah. and that's yeah, it's a huge issue. It's been a huge issue even before my generation, um, and the pandemic has really just uh, stressed it out even more. So to the point that you know we wanted to do something about it, and we're not afraid to pick ourselves up by our smaller boot straps <laughs> and just make some sort of splash. Um, but I love what you just said about. Uh, taking your skill set, identifying your skill set, uh, skill set, and applying it to other places, because that's exactly what I've been able to do with the Farmlink project. So the first tour that I went on during the pandemic was, or, or put together, was the Farmlink response team, and that this was a tour um, yeah. throughout all of North America. It was a 40-day North American run, and um, in the same way that I had pitched to Tui Blue, the travel agency in Europe, for a media uh, production sort of campaign. Mm. My buddy Owen, who I was living with at the time, he's now the media coordinator for Farmlink, um, and I, we put together a pitch for a five-episode series called Hungry for Change that identified individuals within their communities all across America that were creating some sort of substantial change within the food and security space. So we built a little pitch deck. We pitched it to two production companies, Optimist and 30, or 60 Second Docs, and they, uh, they bought it. And with that, I, uh, we found a f financial sponsor or a fiscal sponsor, Planet Home Lending. And um, with a small budget, I rented an RV and we got together a small crew of uh, media production folks, just like kids that were down to make a documentary. Mm -hmm. And I routed us across North, North America and back again up to Seattle, over to New York, down to New Orleans and back to LA um, on yeah, a 40 day journey where we were able to produce these, go to these communities, meet these people, interview them um, and produce these five shorts. And that was just the, the front half. The back half was also visiting all of the farms and food banks that Farmlink had already had uh, relationships with, you know, but they had all been digital relationships. They'd all been developed over the phone or over email. So we, we hadn't really met folks in person. So we were getting on the ground level with the farmers, with the food bank coordinators, masked up, lots of hand sanitizer, doing our thing, getting COVID tests regularly. And I'm happy to say that no one got sick across the entire journey, um, which was great. And um, yeah, we were successfully able to move, I think during those weeks, 72,000 pounds of food and connect wow. with farms that, um, connect with farms that we already had relationships with, as well as identify new places for us to move food to. You know, we went to some really sensitive places in America. We visited a spot called Lake Charles. I don't know if you'd seen news about it in uh, Louisiana. It yeah. had been hit by two hurricanes, already in an impoverished town, yep. hit by two hurricanes in two weeks. I mean, people were living in charred houses because it didn't have anywhere else to go. Um, some first, uh, you know, uh, Red Cross came in, I think, and built like a, a mobile home area. But when the entire town is homeless, you can't just build a trailer park. Right. Like, right. And, and people came in for like that just doesn't work. People came in for maybe 10 days, helped out and then left. So we came in on the second week. Since. Wait, wait, give me the give me a time frame. When was this? What was yeah. The, what's our, OK, what's our right, right, right. This was Louisiana. So we were. Um. This was early September, maybe September like 16th, seven or something like that. Okay. So you're traveling around the end of August into, into mid September. Right. Okay. Right. Got it. Um, yeah. Early, yeah. Early August to mid September. Um, yeah. It was a six week run, I believe. Um, and there's how many of you yeah. in this RV? So we rotated, uh, okay. Owen and I, uh, were the only two that went the full length of the okay. trip. And uh, we switched out different volunteers from the Farming Project throughout. So some kids hopped on in L.A., got off in Chicago. Some kids hopped on in New York, got off in L.A. Um, we teamed up with another crew that was coming out from Northampton, including my, my little sister and um, a couple of her friends who are now leading the Farmland Project as well. Um, and uh, they, they were in a separate vehicle, like a different van. So we had a little caravan at times, which was fun. Okay. But it was a whole lot of camping. It was a whole lot of we, we chose an RV to stay secluded and to stay um, 
you know, distanced. So yep. we were cooking, we weren't going out to restaurants, we were cooking in the RV, we had budgeted for meals, we were totally self-contained. Um, and I felt like that was the right choice given the pandemic and everything. Of course. So tell me, as you got out there, I want to hear also about, you know, Lake Charles, like, tell me what, right. how it felt out there driving around. So just seeing, seeing people. Yeah. Yeah. Eye opening, really humbling. I mean, to walk around rubble, I remember we were in, um, we found, it must've been like a real estate, an old real estate office. And they were like, it felt like a movie scene because I'd never seen anything like that in person. It felt like a film location. I mean, there were like cracked pictures of people's families on the ground. Mm -hmm. Someone had left like a steaming cup of coffee that still had coffee in it. And the rest of the building was completely demolished around this one desk, wow. like really eerie stuff, like stuff that you see in a film and you're like, oh yeah, I get it. Zombie apocalypse. But you see it in person and you're like, oh shit, like right. real apocalypse, real, real danger, real pandemic. And just to see, I mean, Lake Charles was one extreme example, but you know, we worked at food banks all across the nation and to see the lines, you know, food banks open from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And to see the nonstop line wrapping two times around the block, to see the neglect, to see the firsthand need mm -hmm. in this country. I mean, we claim to be, you know, like a, a free nation, but we, when we can't provide for those of us who live here, like no one is really free. Yep. If you don't have the basics, no one is truly free until we all are. Um, and that's sort of a fundamental value that was really um, hammered, uh, I guess, and enforced throughout the, the Farmlink Response Team tour. So um, how did, how, you know, you, in your other world, you drive around, travel around, bringing music to people, bringing art right. to people. Right. Um, and at the end of the day or middle of a show, you get to look out at the crowd and say, it's no the best how, part. And how big, right? And go like, did it. It's the best Made part. It. It's so awesome. How part. did it, I how did it feel? Many times. Tell me, tell me about farm link and being able to do that on a food level uh, right. and bringing these folks together and feeding people. Um, it's powerful, dude. I mean, it's definitely, um, <laughs> it hits different as we say these days. Um, it really was, you know, I definitely get, when I'm touring with a band, um, my favorite moment is definitely looking out at the crowd and seeing people shoulder to shoulder. They might be from different backgrounds, speak different languages, but that one night they are singing the same, they're singing the same lyrics, you know, and that feels like unity. That feels like hope. That feels like it's almost religious in a way, yep. you know, bringing people together. Um, and I, I usually do, I'm not even kidding. I usually do cry every time I'm at a show. I, I can't stop smiling. And that, that feeling reinforces my, my choice. And when I explain that to my parents, that's when they're cool with me joining the circus. Um, but truly to see, uh, bring it to a different level and, and to, to feed people and, and to see the, the, the gratitude and to see um, you know, their thanks. I, I think a, a lot of folks that are food insecure or need help these days, um, to sort of turn a blind well our our, our little um it's the best way to phrase this um it's hard for them to not see change you know and it's really easy for them to just continue throughout their days and not uh not see any glimmer of hope but for them to not only see help but see it coming from younger folks i think went a really long way and um for me that same tear welling up in my eye kind of moment and just smiling happened almost every time we were at a food bank. Um, I, I can imagine. Well I would, I would imagine dripping sweat. I could imagine it was even more intense because you're feeding people. You're literally yeah. feeding people. Uh, and that meal could be right. the difference between, you know, potentially life and death. Right. Not to, not to overstate it, but no, no, you're completely, you're completely right. right. Yeah. Especially these days that it is, it is the difference between life and death. And um, once that hits and you see it in person, yeah, you, I mean, you're correct, Larry. It is uh, that feeling times 10, times 100. But it's that same pit in your stomach. And I'm sure right. to all those, the roadies out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Of course. When you see a show envelop in front of your eyes.